Gang violence has been a part of some Los Angeles neighborhoods for decades. But it wasn't until the 1980s that gang members saw their biggest money-making opportunity with crack cocaine. Little did they know that the CIA was using them as pawns in a larger scheme, allowing the more affordable drug to come into their neighborhood. Freeway Ricky Ross, one of America's biggest drug dealers, unwittingly became a main player in the Central American drug connection that sent millions of American dollars in drug money to Nicaragua. The CIA's plan was to promote and finance the contra-revolutionary group that was trying to depose the socialist Sandinista government in the Central American country. Russia had gave the Sandinistas $100 million to fight with. Congress had cut off all the money from the, the Contras. So now the Sandinistas had an advantage. President Ronald Reagan and then Vice President George H.W. Bush fretted over Soviet influence in Nicaragua. They would be in our backyard. I believe that they felt it was more valuable to sacrifice a particular sector of America and a race of people in America in order to save the whole country. Former LAPD detective and author Michael Rupert has written extensively about the government's involvement in drug trafficking around the world. He says politics isn't the only motive. The control of the cash from the drug trade is of vital importance to Wall Street because drug profits are laundered onto corporations and banks' net profits. But the CIA's policy of looking the other way wasn't just for the benefit of big business or crushing revolutionary movements abroad. Domestically, drugs and drug lords were used to quell black activist movements that challenged the status quo. Iman Abdul Ali Musa was a major drug dealer in Oakland, California, where the revolutionary leftist Black Panther Party had its headquarters. So uh, the government wanted to stop the black movement in its tracks. So technically it used us, drug dealers. It gave us high quality heroin and cocaine to pump into our own neighborhood and then we sold it to our people to break the back of the revolution. The drug ravaged Oakland's poor community just like Ricky Ross's drug empire ruined parts of LA. The worst of the crack epidemic may be in the past and this community is trying to rebuild but an ugly legacy remains. Now this is the south central neighborhood where Ricky Ross got started in his life of crime. Ross admits to his crimes, but he doesn't think he should have been the only one who was punished over the Contra cocaine connection. Many in his community agree, including gang expert Alex Alonzo. We just want to blame the black or Hispanic street dealer at the end of the day, and we want to ignore this totality of circumstances that really ends up causing drugs to be grown in Colombia and ending up on our front door here in the United States. The government's effort resulted in a generation of young black men being sent to prison and caused many hardworking families to lose their homes. Many wonder whether Los Angeles' poor neighborhoods can ever recover from the damage inflicted by the crack epidemic. So once you look at this here, then it's easy for you to see that they didn't mind sacrificing a particular sector of, of America. And as long as the government and America's elite continue to benefit from the illegal drug trade, more suffering may lie ahead. Money works in, in, in the ways money has always worked. Where there are profits to be made, people will suffer. In Los Angeles, Ramon Galindo, RT. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.